So I typed in Tori Williams events and it was a dollar just to buy the wow. domain name. And I was like, okay, this is the sign. So I took a leap of faith mm -hmm. and I stopped working at the salon. I just started, I stopped working at the salon and I just started to pursue the event planning business full time. And I literally did a friend of mine's event and I didn't know what I was doing. I charged a <laughs> $500, y'all. It was like, I don't know, just, wow. just give me $500, girl, I'll do it. And that light bulb went off for me. And, and at that event, I met someone else that was getting that was getting ready to get married. And then they booked me. And then a week later, I did something else. And it literally took off wow. faster than me. I was not even prepared. I had to catch up with the business. I was getting so much. Mm -hmm. And um, it was truly a blessing. And I literally have worked this pretty much this whole time without doing a lot, a lot of soliciting. Yeah. I've worked on a lot of referrals. So it's just been a blessing. Wow. back for another episode of finding your niche with niche i'm so excited because we're on location today i know it's a little bit of a different setup but i'm so excited to talk to my next guest the luxury and celebrity event planner and designer tori williams thank you so much for coming on the show thank you so much for having me yeah i'm super excited to kind of get into the conversation of what you do and how you do what you do this is already like clearly set the tone for the interview thank you thank you for coming to our studio today yeah i love that okay so um i think what you do is interesting i was looking at your stuff doing a little bit of research into kind of like who you are in your in, in your business as a, at large um when i think of <laughs> an event planner yeah. and what it takes to actually execute at that. I'm, I was trying to decide, like, what is the actual skill of an event planner, would you say, from your experience? Girl, let me just jump right into it. The event planner side. So it's two sides to it. You uh -huh. got the planner side and you got the designer side. So I've been blessed that I can do both. Mm -hmm. So the planner side, honey, you plan and you get everybody together. You find the vendors, you find the venue, you manage the budget, you are the peacemaker, you are the negotiator. It's just like hiring a good attorney to represent you. You hire a good planner yeah. to represent you. So basically that's what I do. And then on the design side, I actually design and come up with the vision for the events. And then I have my my beautiful team that helps me execute everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're a luxury one-stop shop. Okay, so when you say luxury, I always think that's an <laughs> interesting word because it's different for everybody. It is. But for you and your experience, where is the line actually drawn between when something is considered luxury and when it's not? Okay. Um, luxury can mean different things for different people. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that because I don't want to offend anybody out there. However, for me, Luxury is the type of events that I do. The the execution and the design is a, is a little bit more. No, let me not say a little. I'm sorry. It's a lot more upscale, and I'm just talking about what I do, not what anybody else do. So my designs is a lot more upscale, um, and some of my clientele is a little bit more elite. So mm -hmm. that is my um, interpretation of luxury. Okay, give and then me. the budgets are different. Yeah, I was about say to say, that. give yeah. me a specific. Like of Ooh. something that's like, oh no, okay, now we're officially talking about luxury. <laughs> Give me a specific thing that somebody might have at their event. Well, it's not even about the the items at the event. It's about the overall experience, okay. the, the client experiences. A lot of my clients, when they book me, um, they come to me and, and a lot of them d truly don't have the time to do anything. So when they come to me, they give me colors, they tell me what they want, and it's up to me to pull off everything um, mm -hmm. when it comes to their events. So a lot of the times I'm picking the venue, I'm picking the, the food options, I'm picking the drink options, and I'm putting together signature cocktails. I execute the overall design for the actual event. So when it comes to... Um, for instance, when some people book ballrooms, mm -hmm. you know, they'll go in and typically set up what's there. No, I'm bringing in carpet. So if we, my cl clients hate the carpet, 
we put carpet over their carpet. <laughs> if they don't have chandeliers, we bring them in and we hang them. And I'm not talking about little baby chandeliers. I'm talking about six to eight feet, 10 foot chandeliers. We bring them in and hang them in the ceiling. Wow. Um, we are installing draping and structures. So it's a little, it's a lot more, a different experience, mm -hmm. I would say, for um, our clients and for their guests. And as we try to do things throughout the evening that creates an overall experience, because anybody can just go to a party. Mm -hmm. But when you have different things that's happening and different experiences, different entertainment, the lighting changes and different things, that creates an experience for not only for, for my clients, for the guests as well. Yeah, so, yes. I love that. I got stressed out listening to all the things that you just kind of ran down the list that mm -hmm. you have to do, all of the T's that you have to cross. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's understood that your specific job is one of the top three highest, most stressful industries fields to be in. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain a level head and still operate at the level of excellence that you do? Well, for me, my thing is I always try to think of everything that could go wrong and get ahead of it. Okay. But even with, with that, things often do go wrong on the day of the event. You just got to be, you know, you got to not overreact mm -hmm. and you got to get your head out of the sand and figure out a way to fix it and you got to fix it quick quickly that's one of the things that god equipped me to do you know mm -hmm. so i feel like i'm really good at not only executing or, or leading my team to execute but being able to solve issues quickly mm -hmm. without panicking and and you know you just got to be able to think quick on your feet mm -hmm. now i'm not going to tell anybody that it's not stressful because it's very stressful i'm stressed out a lot actually but <laughs> you get it done i get it done i can handle <laughs> the stress and then once everything is over yeah you know me and my husband will hit the road we'll go on vacation somewhere honey so i can unwind <laughs> and get my mind right before i take on the next event <laughs> i love that okay so like you said there's a lot of things that are that do go wrong when you when the event it's the day of the event yeah it's time like everybody's about to show up how do you deal with like the you know, the clients, meeting the client's needs, but also not sacrificing the flair that you add to all of the events that you have? Well, that's um, a good question. And what I would say about that is, honestly, and there's no wood around here, I just knock on the glass, <laughs> knock on the glass. I really don't have a, a lot of, of those type of problems because like I said, a lot of the clients, they truly trust me and I leave a level of, even though they have expectation for me, I'm very honest with my clients. So mm -hmm. I let them know upfront what I'm able to do, what I'm not able to do. And along the way of planning, if there's an issue, I come to them, not only just to tell them what the problem is, I also have a solution to the problem before I come to them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times I don't really have a lot of problems with meeting my client's expectation. I think because of the level of work that I do and what I've been able to produce mm -hmm. and the recommendation of who they came from, a lot of people just genuinely trust me mm -hmm. to execute it. I've had clients that, I have one client in particular, We they booked me over the phone. Wow, okay. Um, the event, they and it, the event was in a week and it oh was a large production event. And I produced everything for them. And I mean, found the venue, like I said, I did food for them. Um, we did the alcohol and I did all of the core. I've never worked with them before. I just went on onto their social media page and did the research to see wow. what they like and, and what I thought they would like. So mm -hmm. my first time meeting them was when they got to the venue on the day of the event when it was time for me to do the room reveal before the guests came in. Wow. And they were genuinely pleased. Please, now I'm not going to tell y'all that I'm like, like, oh, I'm just super, I am super confident, but at the same time, it's always a little part of me was like, oh, I, hope yeah. they don't, I hope they like it. But for the most part, I haven't had any problems. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I thank God for that. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. I think that's like, you know, that's the most kind of um, on your on the edge of, edge of your seat kind of aspect of what you do yeah. is getting that first reaction because you only get to have a first reaction one time. Yeah. And so when people do that and they walk into a room, how does it make you feel to see somebody's mind just being completely blown Let by something that was you in something. your head? Actually, out of everything that I do, that's my favorite part for all of my clients to see their reaction when mm -hmm. they walk into the room and they are literally like floored because they can't believe what I've been able to <laughs> to pull off is is such a is is such a gratification mm -hmm. there. It's it's, it's so. It just fills my heart, you yeah. know, so I really love it, you know, and I love it to see the guests come in, too, because they come in and they like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, so it just it makes me feel very proud 
Um, it makes me proud of my team because, you know, I push them hard too. Yeah. But um, just to see something that started from a scratch piece of paper that come to fruition is mm -hmm. amazing. Okay, speaking of starting from scratch, because you weren't always in this industry, no. from what I understand, nope. um, with the show being called Finding Your Niche with Niche, I like to talk to people who have found their niche. Yes. So you have fully found your lane and you're walking in it purposefully. But talk to me about the maybe if there was an isolated moment that got you to pursue this specific niche and what that moment was like for you. Oh, yes. So... Um, I used to be a hair and makeup artist okay. and I did hair and makeup for a year, ever since I was a kid, since I was like 15, 16 years old. I was like wow. one of those girls at home doing hair out of her mom's <laughs> kitchen yeah. and you know, all the high school girls came to get their hair done by me and all that stuff. So once I moved to Atlanta, I continued that, you know, because that's what I knew, but it wasn't fulfilling you know I still mm -hmm. felt like something was missing it's just like mm, you know this is good I'm great at it but I just feel like it's something more mm -hmm. you know but I couldn't put my my eye on it at the time so um and I tell the story I've told the story a couple times but I was, we'll we'll talk about it again today and I'll try to make it a little quick but mm -hmm. um I actually God allowed me to I'm very spiritual mm -hmm. um so God allowed me to be able to do hair and makeup for brides. And I was doing all of these brides and I was doing their hair and makeup and they getting their makeup done, they getting their hair done, and they telling me all the good and all the bad yeah. about their experiences with, you know, having to, you know, preparing for their wedding. And then not only that, I'm meeting vendors at the time, you know, I'll be there on the day of their wedding, mm -hmm. you know, just to see them down the aisle and sometime I'll wait till they get ready to go on the reception just in case they're crying or whatever to touch them up. Yeah. So not knowing that God was preparing me for exactly what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a clue about it at the time. I'm just doing it. So me and my husband got ready to get married. And then so going through that <laughs> process. I started like, oh, this is what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, and I had um, an experience with a planner that I, I wouldn't say it was bad, but it just wasn't the best. It wasn't what my expectation was. And so it forced me to learn the business. I had to learn how to read my own contracts. I had to learn how to negotiate my contracts. I just had to step up to the plate. At the time, I thought it was unfair because it's all you like mm -hmm. anybody else. I'm getting married. It's supposed to be yeah. my day. But at the same time, it did teach me a lot because I had to learn the business. And it was certain things that I heard the brides talk about that mm -hmm. I witnessed that I, I ended up learning. So anyway, after we got married, um, I just started thinking about it. And, and the salon that I was working at, um, <clears throat> it closed down. And I was just like, you wow. know, and I was trying to open up another salon. I was like, I'm just going to open up my own <laughs> salon. And, and it, it wasn't happening the way that I thought it should. Mm -hmm. So I literally went online. I was like, okay, let me just type in this name. It was Tori Williams Events. And I was trying to rebrand my other business, the, the hair and makeup business. It just was not coming together. So I typed in Tori Williams Events, and it was a dollar just to buy the wow. domain name. And I was like, okay, this is the sign. So... I took a leap of faith mm -hmm. and I stopped working at the salon. I just started, I stopped working at the salon and I just started to pursue the event planning business full time. And I literally did a friend of mine's event and I didn't know what I was doing. I charged a <laughs> $500, y'all. It was like, I don't know, just, wow. whatever, just give me $500, girl, I'll do it. And that light bulb went off for me. And, and at that event, I met someone else that was getting that was getting ready to get married. And then they booked me. And then a week later, I did something else. And it literally took off wow. faster than me. I was not even prepared. I had to catch up with the business. I was getting so much. Mm -hmm. And um, it was truly a blessing. And I literally have worked this pretty much this whole time without doing a lot, a lot of soliciting. Yeah. I've worked on a lot of referrals. So... It's just been a blessing. Wow. I love that. I'm interested to know, too, because there's some differences between what makes someone be a good event planner and not a good event planner. That is correct. From your experience, what was maybe the most eye-opening thing that you discovered that you were like, okay, I definitely do not want to emulate that once I get into the field? Um, I think is it was more so of looking at what I want for myself. You know, if I'm paying someone money to produce an event for me, mm -hmm. what, what would my expectations be? And I know my expectations is high. Mm -hmm. So I have to mimic what, I, what my expectations would be. Listening to your client. You know, you got to listen to what your client's um, needs 
And at this point, I can read people mm -hmm. over the phone. I don't wow. have to meet you. I know what you want over the phone by talking to you. I can tell whether or not you're going to be somebody that's more modern or somebody that loves glamour mm -hmm. or somebody that's more um, straight line and, and modern. It's, you, you have these different type of clients. Mm -hmm. And just based on their personality of talking to people over the phone, I usually can tell people after listening to them for about 10 minutes, yeah. I'd be like, okay, so this is what you want. <laughs> and I'd run it off. They'd be like, that's, that's it. Yeah. You know, and um, I think also just honesty and just going to bat for your clients. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that plays a large part in it. Yeah. I want to, I want to stay on um, the clients for a second. Okay. Um, you've been privileged, like you said, God's blessed you to be able to work with some incredible people yeah. uh, who have the budget. <laughs> Um, talk to me about, you know, putting on these events and maybe some of your most favorite events that you've done so far for some of the influencers and celebrities that you've been able to work with. All right. So the celebrity that I enjoy working with is Crystal Renee. Um, she's on the show um, Sisters and she also has her spinoff show um, Zatima on BT. BT Plus? BT Plus. And um, it's funny because I met Crystal through another photographer a few years ago. It's probably been about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, she hit me up. It was her birthday. It was actually on the day of her birthday. And she was just like, oh, you know, a friend gave me your contact information and I'm looking to have a small dinner party. I wanted to get some balloons and stuff done. So I didn't have time to do it that day because I was working another event. But I did send somebody over there mm -hmm. that executed. She sent me pictures and everything was great. We started following each other on social media. And, you know, you just... We came social media buddies, and uh, when it was time for her 40th, she hit me up, and she was just like, hey, Tori, she was like, I want to do this big 40th birthday party, and she was like, I can't think of anybody else that I would want to do wow. it but you. And I was like, okay, cool, let's do it. So we started off on this venture. She gave me her vision for it, mm -hmm. um, but she gave me the colors and the vision for what she wanted. We both decided on the venue because it was a venue that we both love. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of spinned off from there. I think that we was already friends, but I think that situation even brought us closer because we was talking a lot about the the actual event, but then also getting to know each other on a personal basis. And she is such an amazing person, just as, as an amazing woman in general. Yeah. So, and then we're both from Memphis. So it just kind of took off and, and built that relationship from the, from there. And then not only that, she gave me the the just the freedom to do what I wanted to do and just be as creative as I can with her yeah. event. And I remember when she walked into the room for the room reveal, it was like priceless. Like her face just told it yeah. all. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think that Crystal is like one of my favorite celebrities that I've worked with. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Uh, I'm interested to know too, because not only the jo is the job stressful, mm -hmm. however, comma, yeah. the, the job is also lucrative. Yes. So I'm interested to know how you were able to go from charging 500 to... To charging... Six figures, more six figures. Uh, upwards of six, mm -hmm. six, six figures. Talk to me about that and what kind of mind set work did you have to do right. to be able to say, okay, I'm charging 500, but now the price right. went up. Well, I mean, it's over, it, it, it grows over time. So it's like when I started, of course I was new in the business, so I couldn't go in charging, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, hundred thousand dollars. I said that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't go in charging it off the, you know, on the back end. Yeah. So um, it was the, the more experience I gained, Every year I made myself a promise. I gave myself a raise every year, mm. you know, um, and it didn't, it didn't, like I said, I, I, and I'll be honest with you guys, I went maybe like two or three years, <laughs> two, about two to three, maybe almost three and a half, four years. Well, I didn't make any money in the beginning, mm. you know, because I choose to pump the money back into the business. I chose to the money that I made as a profit. I chose to put it back into inventory, into thir certain things, advertisement for myself, doing photo shoots, branding, and all of that stuff. So in the beginning, it wasn't a lot of money made. Um, and then I, I worked my ass off. Let me just tell y'all that. That part. <laughs> don't get it twisted. <laughs> I worked my ass off. So it, it, I'll be honest with you. I just got into the point in the last couple of years where I just told myself, like, listen, you know, I was doing 40-plus events every year. So you got to wow. think that's pretty much every weekend through the week, 
I was doing events back to back to back, me and my team, like they was in the trenches, in the mud with me. We grinded out, mm. you know, to build this name. So it don't come overnight. I'll tell anybody that it doesn't. You got to work towards it. And um, but like I said, uh, I think a couple of years ago, I just decided like, you know, I'm working myself to death, you know, and I feel like I've built up this brand. You know, my team is I got a great, solid team and I just felt like. I'm worth more than that. Mm -hmm. I know what I bring to the table and it's not about me being arrogant. It's more about me being confident yeah. about the work that I do and what we produce and then what people are telling me. You know, and I'm, when I mean people, I'm talking about the the, the guests that's at the events, my clients, mm -hmm. and everything else. Um, and then I just, and then from hearing other stories about other planners, yeah. I'm like, okay, I know we're doing it right. Or when my team go, if I send them to work with another planner, they come back and tell me horror stories. Or I'm hearing photographers like, man, we've never worked with someone with the level of execution mm -hmm. and scheduling and everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So it just let me know that we're doing something right and, it's, and, and, and just separate from what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So I decided a couple of years ago that I'm not going to do 40, 50 events per year. <laughs> I'm going to cut it back and do 10, 10, 10 is the max for yeah. the year. Yeah. But we would do large scale events. And that was just my mindset. Mm -hmm. So and I decided and I didn't take on events for like, Mm, maybe about, let me see, April, May, June, July, probably about four or five months. Wow. I was turning down events left and right. They was coming, oh, my budget, 20, 30, 40. I was like, nope, nope, nope. It's got to be 100,000 or more. Oh, I ain't doing it. I'm not moving. Wow. And eventually I got a call and I got a call from a client and her budget was $250,000. Hey. So, and from that, they kept coming. So, you can believe it, you can achieve it. Wow, yeah. and achieving it, you are doing. Yes, now it's, lot, it's more work, mm -hmm. you know, but I think even my team would agree <laughs> that they like this better than um, doing the 40, 50 events a year. Do you yeah. guys agree? <laughs> <laughs> people have spoken yeah um what what kind of game would you give you know when when, it, when you're talking about executing right and being able to execute at such a high level with somebody who's put in putting in such a high price point and expectation for the event what are some like of the tangible things and maybe practical things that you do to kind of check the box when it comes to executing at an event Ooh, well this is the first thing i'll tell you guys i don't do it by myself you know, and I, I'll tell anybody, it takes, you got to have a great team. And I am blessed to have an amazing team mm -hmm. that's behind me that understands the execution. And a lot of events we don't set up in one day. You know, when our clients book us, we usually start at the actual venue two days prior to what the event is. So if the event is on a Saturday, we start our setup at the actual venue on Thursday. Okay. So it takes two days to, to set everything up. But then mm -hmm. not only that, the team is usually working starting on Mondays up until the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So it's about planning, you know, like I said, planning, making sure all the vendors is on board. Um, we're ordering flowers, we having things, I have a lot of things built custom, um, like we'll build stages, we'll build cages, we'll build whatever that's needed to mm -hmm. make that um, event specific to that client. I mm -hmm. don't believe in repeating the same thing twice. Oh, that's, Wow. Yeah, no, I don't do the, the same thing twice. If somebody asks me to do something, and I'll be like, uh-uh, we already did that. We're not doing that. But I can come up something that fits what you want in your personality. That's mm -hmm. what part of the luxury brand is. I forgot to say that earlier. Custom. Mm. So, yeah, that's a big thing. I love that. But more specifically, um, because it does take a team, but at the end of the day, the name that I see right here is... is it's Tori Williams. Okay, yeah, so I, wanted, I, want to say, I want you to talk about specifically, what is the Tori sauce? Like, what is it that you are doing that's making you so more distinguished than the other event planners in the area? Well, um, I will say this. I think it's the... I have my own niche when it comes to design. So I will say that my design skill is mm -hmm. different. I think my branding, what I have built, my planning um, expertise mm -hmm. is a large part of it. And I think it's just me. It's just my personality. I'm, I'm real authentic and real. What you see is what you get. And it's funny because people see me on social media <laughs> and you see all these feathers and bows and shit, excuse me. But they think that, oh my gosh, she's just one person. But when you meet me in person, I'm just who I am. I'm yeah. a real person. 
And um, I think people just respect that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a large part of it. And then I also believe in what's for you is what's for you. Mm. You know, so if God got this for me, this is, this is for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of God, because I was thinking about this question too and talking to you about it, because to me, I would say another way of considering what you do is kind of being in the dream making business. You make people's dreams come true. Yes. Um, when you think about the inception of this brand and what it is today. Well, I will say this, I over exceed. You over exceed. Yeah, I, I go out of my way to over exceed. Okay, I yeah. love that. What would you say when you think about what God has done mm -hmm. for your business mm -hmm. and you think about how he's gotten you through all of the things that you've overcome, mm -hmm. uh, what would be your dream come true for this business? Well, my dream now is because I've been in this 10 years. I think I probably got, at the most, maybe another five in me. So at this point, I'm gearing up to teach a community. Mm -hmm. So I'm building now a community of planners and designers that want to learn how to do what I do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the goal now. Um, this is the thing. A lot of times in this industry and many other industries, a lot of people don't like to work together. Mm -hmm. And it's, to me, that's stupid because... Um, it's enough money out here for everybody. I don't know if people know, the wedding and event industry is a billion dollar industry. You can look it up. It's enough money out here for everybody. And I tell anybody, I don't want to do everybody's event. Mm -hmm. That's too much. You know, I've already <laughs> tried that and that's just too much. I don't, I can't have a personal life. Yeah. So at this point now, I'm working on building a community where I can teach other people how to go to their cities and states and mm -hmm. do exactly what I what I do, mm -hmm. and I'm and it doesn't bother me one bit because people are like, oh, you want to teach people? You gonna teach people what you do? Yes, why not? Yeah, you know because what's for them is what's for them, and what's for me is for is for me. Yeah, so I don't have a problem with it. I love that. I think something else really unique about what you said is <laughs> your vision has a has a expiration date. Oh yes, and I think you know for something to be so successful in such a you know essentially a dream come true for what you've already done. How did you get to that point, that mindset that you have of like knowing that it is, it does have a stopping point for me? Child, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. I put, you know, just over time, just like you said, it's, it's a very stressful industry. Um, I'm getting a little older. Um, Where? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. I'm getting a little older. And then it's just other things that I want to pursue and do. Okay. You know, so... You know, it's not like I'm ending tomorrow. Like I said, I got another five years in me, but I feel like it's smart to start working towards that now. Mm -hmm. um, and just just seeing what is going to be the next chapter of my life. It's kind of like when I was exiting out of the um, the hair and makeup field coming into this. So it's, it's now it's that mindset where I'm thinking like, okay, maybe I got another five years in me, but what is that? What is going to be the next chapter of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I always have a love for this, you know, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, and I do want the brand to go on, but I, I'm grooming my team for that. Now. Yeah. 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 But for me, I think, um, with building a community, I want to get more into motivational speaking because people always tell me I'm a good motivator. Um, and motivating people to go out there and, and fulfill their dreams and do yeah. what they need to do. So I want to get more into that and just some other things. And then um, I spent a lot of my years, I mean, from the time I was a child, working. I've worked mm -hmm. my whole life. That's all I know. So I want to spend the second half of my life enjoying it, mm -hmm. you know, and living out the rest of my days to the fullest. I love that. With the community, um, I think that's going to be really dope and super cool for people to kind of learn. Yes. The, the, the Tory sauce. So what, um, with that, what is some things that people can expect if they okay. are a part of the community? I'm glad you asked, honey. <laughs> Let's get into that. <laughs> so what people will learn from the TW community, um, I have online courses. They will have a three-day in-person workshop where you will work with myself and my team where you wow. can get hands-on experience to teach you exactly what I do, how we do it, the resources where to get it from, and you get the opportunity to um, work a lot me, alongside me and my team at an actual one of my actual events. Not only that, we have twice a month Zoom calls where I get online with them for two hours. I'm an open book. You can ask me whatever you need and I can actually help you and coach you through 
whatever challenges that you're having for your business. We teach you how to charge, how to get to the, now this is not, this is the luxury market. Let me just say that. <laughs> this TW community is for people who want to break into the luxury industry. They want to make six figures, honey. So uh, let me say that. Anyway. <laughs> um, back to the Zoom calls. So they'll have the twice a month Zoom calls. Um, and it's just a slew of other things. We teach you how to charge um, your clients properly how to make a profit and how not to overwork yourself to death because in this industry you can work yourself to death and trust me i know because i used to do that but honey am i right now honey <laughs> so and then you don't work your team to death too you know you got to come up with a plan so your team won't be worked to death so they won't leave on you so we're going to teach you all of that <laughs> i love that that sounds amazing okay so in that in that package you said you're an open you that people have to get the opportunity to see you as an open book mm -hmm. and asking questions i want you to be an open book with me right now okay go ahead um so also i didn't mention you you are on vh1's uh, my celebrity wedding my celebrity dream wedding dream wedding mm -hmm. okay talk to me about that experience wow <laughs> <laughs> it was an experience no it was great um it was myself uh, Lance Devereaux with Devereaux Events and Courtney Agensa. Uh, we three, they're, they're from uh, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I was the person here in Atlanta, but we all teamed up um, and we had a 20 episode run of a oh television God. show where we executed weddings and events. So we did designs and um, the execution of weddings for clients that wanted they had a story i'll mm -hmm. say that so you know most clients they've had you know different hardships over the years and it was their opportunity to have their dream wedding so courtney lance and i had to present our designs to the clients and they selected whichever one they wanted to be the lead planner and designer on their mm -hmm. um, wedding day and then the other two had to work in assistance y'all know i want a lot that's all right i'm gonna leave that out there but that's okay <laughs> yep <laughs> I love it. Well, that's so cool. Okay, yeah. so who would you say would be your dream celebrity to do an event for? Who would be my dream celebrity? I got a few okay. that I haven't touched yet. Kim Kardashian, I'm coming for you, honey. I will see you soon. You and your mama and your sisters. <laughs> we'll see you soon. I love it. Okay, yeah. who else? Oprah, I will see you soon. <laughs> I'm here for it. Anybody else? The Obamas, I will see you soon. <laughs> and whoever's in the White House next, I will see you soon. I cannot wait wait to walk the halls of the White House with my feathers. See you soon. <laughs> Y'all can run it back when I make it over there. Okay, <laughs> that part. With all that you've been able to kind of like accomplish over your career, what would you say has been the biggest takeaway when it comes to who you've become as a person? Hmm. What is the biggest takeaway? Um, learning that it's not all about me. It's not about me. It's not about the events. It's about the impact that you're leaving on the world and just the, the, the fact that God has blessed me to be a part of so many amazing events that are life-changing for people because you, you never know what people are going through. So that small part of what I'm able to contribute for them and how I make them feel inside mm -hmm. is priceless more than anything else. So it's like God is using me and using my team to actually, you know, produce and, and do something that people will remember for, for years to come. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just a blessing in itself. You know, you can do so many other jobs, but the fact that he's allowed me the room and space to do this, I think is, is priceless. Mm. And I would be remiss if we didn't kind of touch on it a little bit because you've mentioned the word team several times throughout this interview mm -hmm. and how impactful the role of having a team is, is very important in the success of your business. When it comes to like people joining the community, talk about that because a lot of people are afraid to like hire people or you know trust yeah. people with their business. Yeah. What was some of the things that you did to make sure that your vision and your expectation translates well with the team? Well, let me see. With my team, what I would honestly say, the people, God has really blessed me to have a really, to put the right people in my life. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. The people that's passionate about the job, it's hard to get people that is only looking for a job. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't hire that way. I hire people that are looking for a career 
that's looking for something to be a part of long term and then um, that are ambition ambition that has ambition themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that plays a large part in it. And that people that, you know, for my team and I can speak for them, I think they truly believe in me and they believe in the vision, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, I try to treat my team right. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's been some times over the years where I haven't, you know, it's, it's, it's been hard. It's been times I haven't even been able to pay the team sometime, but they still stay, mm -hmm. you know, they stay and they, they work with me and that's that's been great. So, and I try to motivate them. I, I try to make sure that, you know, other dreams outside of working for Tory Williams events, mm -hmm. if something that they wanna pursue, I try to support each and every one of them 200 percent mm -hmm. and i think that makes a difference so um that and then just setting the setting the expectation mm -hmm. you know i think people are always people always want to be a part of something great yeah yeah so i think that that plays a part in it i feel like whoever the planner is or whoever you are you set the bar for for the team expectation mm -hmm. or you know yeah yeah on the contrary, I'm sure there's been times, or maybe there hasn't been, but kind of like what you're talking about, maybe you missed the mark on something. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like a story of a time where maybe a client was unhappy and how you overcame that situation? Um, I'll say this about a client being unhappy. And this happened early on. I took on a client that... Um, Honestly, in the back of my head, I knew there was going to be problems. Mm. I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, and I learned something in it. And I didn't. I end. I terminated the. Um, I terminated that contract before we got to the event, because one thing that I realized is that if we don't genuinely have a connection and we don't get along and we got to go through, you know, if especially if it's a wedding, you mm. got to go through six months a year dealing with somebody and you don't like them. That's pure hell for the both of us. I want the experience to be great for you and for me. Mm -hmm. So for me. If I, if I don't, if that energy is not there and if we just don't mesh and vibe, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you a shitty person or I'm a shitty person. Yeah. It's just it, that we're not meant to work together. So I would much rather you go and find somebody else that's going to make you happy and then let me go ahead on. I've, I find another client, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't care what the dollar amount is. I've, I've actually, I just, I, I just terminated one last year like that. And it was, a. Uh, it was a celebrity client, and it wasn't the celebrity. It was the the the. I'm saying too much, but yeah, it was the. No, you're not. You're not, say, with, you're not saying what you was, want to say. <laughs> it was somebody that. Um, it was the the spouse of the the person, and. Does she this person just, have a name? Yeah, they do, but we, we're not going to go that far. <laughs> but um, the, the the spouse just wasn't respectful mm -hmm. of myself and my staff. Mm -hmm. And one thing about it is, it's like we're here to we 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 provide a service. We're no one servant. Yeah. So um, and that person just couldn't get that through their heads. So no matter the dollar amount, I just terminate. You know, you you just find somebody. Integrity. Else. Be me. Yeah, very much so. Integrity is yeah. a key factor. What would be uh, something about you that people would be surprised to know? I'm a homebody. Really? Yeah. When I'm not doing events, I like to be at home in my skims roll with no makeup on, watching Netflix, <laughs> Netflix and chilling. <laughs> That's what I like to do. And eat. I'm a foodie. I, I love, love to eat. that. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm really simple. Now, I like fashion. I like to dress up and look the part when I go out. But other than that, I like to be at home. Mm -hmm. I like to be at home with my husband and my dog. I love that. On the contrary, game day. What is game day, Tori, like? Game day, Tori, is very much different. Game day is do your job, do not F with me, and do it to your fullest advantage. <laughs> I don't like to play on the day of. It's, it's, it's stressful in itself. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very serious on the day of. You know, I, I don't like to play. Yeah. Do you and guys, I don't have do you guys like her on game day? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, Shane the Devil. Look, she rubbing the back of her head. They don't like She's me on game day. day. <laughs> yeah, pressure. That's funny. Pressure. That pressure makes diamonds. <laughs> and here we are. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you so much for this conversation no, and being you. able to get a, a better understanding of who you are and yeah. what you do. And so for people who are interested in what you said today and they want to get involved, I want to be a dope event planner and designer. Yes. What's the best way for them to kind of contact you? Okay. So if you're looking to join our community, make sure you reach out through our website. That is www.the, 
TWAcademy.com. And also, if you want to book an event, make sure you reach out at www.ToriWilliamsEvents.com and you can follow us on Instagram or any social media platform at Tori Williams Events or Tori Williams, excuse me, excuse me, or the TW Academy on Instagram. There it is. What's your favorite type of event to do? Uh, it used to be weddings. It ain't weddings no more. Uh, <laughs> parties. Parties? Yes. Because you get to turn up? You know what? I don't even be turning up like really? that. Really? Uh-uh. Nope. But I like, the, I like the party. The parties is just less stress. I like weddings too, but it's more to think about and do. Um, but the, the, and I did weddings for so long. It's like I've done weddings for like 10 years straight. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten more into parties. Wow. Yeah. Well, keep partying Thank and keep you. doing what you're doing. I commend you and wish you many, many more years of success. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you so much for having me. No, it's been a pleasure. Y'all yes. tap in. Peace.